Paintball Nerd. Today's guest on Paintball Nerd's Fun 5 started playing paintball in 1986. He went pro in 1993 with the Jacksonville Warriors. In 96, he joined the All-Americans, which would eventually become the Philly All-A's. He's played for Infamous, Miami Effect. He's played for Arsenal, Naughty Dog, Strange, Dynasty, Avalanche. And now he plays the 10-man mechanical events with the All-Americans. He's the owner of Dilly Dilly Donuts, the best donuts around. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Frank the Tank Connell. <laughs> I love that. That was great. Thanks. How you doing, man? Good, man. It's a pleasure to have you on. I remember watching you as a kid and Sunday Drivers with the hot gun, you know, chronoing and, and oh, yeah. uh, that whole debacle. And I kind of grew up on like the all A's and Ironman rivalry, you know? Oh, it was there. Us, Iron Man, Aftershock. It was a battle every time, without a doubt. It's not so much that way anymore, huh? No, it's not. No, really. You know, it's funny because you go to these these events now and we go to the mechanical stuff and we're all friends. Before we wanted yeah. to kill each other. Like, literally, we'd, we'd be ready to fist fight. Now we're all giving each other hugs. Hey, how's the family? What's going on? How you doing? Shit like that. So it's really cool. So what happened? Did we all just grow up? And, you know, recognize that we have a lot more commonality than, than we thought. I honestly, I guess it's a little bit of that. And I guess it's the competitiveness is kind of mellowed out a little bit. Like I'm, I'm probably one of the most competitive people. I'll, I'll bet you anything. Let's, I don't know. Let's throw rocks. Let's, you know, let's see who can skip the farthest, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm, that's who I am. I just like to compete. Let's race. Let's do this. Let's do whatever. So I guess maybe the older we get, the less competitive we get. So. We're just out there yeah. having fun. Well, I, st I mean, I certainly still see the competitiveness. I mean, especially in you, uh, you know, I, in, in Tampa 10 man last year, I remember there's a few seconds left on hyperball. You ran down and bunkered the last guy and had enough steam to, to go back and hang the flag. And I was like, dude, Frank still, he's still got it. You know, <laughs> some days I pull a little bit of energy out and, you know, <laughs> try to show off my speed that I used to have. It's not like it used to be. That's for sure. I remember I was uh, a couple years back, one of my teammates challenged me to a race at dinner. He's like, you're not fast anymore. You're not fast anymore. I said, all right, let's go right now. Like we literally went out in the parking lot of like PF Chang's and like raced on the concrete. <laughs> it was, it was Did pretty you win? Fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still have it, but not, you know, I used to have that. I used to have that speed and then I'd hit that second gear and I was gone. I don't The <laughs> second gear just for some reason just doesn't kick in as fast. So it's it depends right. how much adrenaline is there, right? Yeah, I guess that could be. <laughs> Dude. Oh, well, I assume the name Frank the Tank came from the the uh, ability to shoot a paintball marker really well. You know what? It was kind of crazy how that came about. Um Glaze did it. Rusty's brother Gator. They were uh I can't remember where it was. I was like, maybe in, I was in Pomona one year. We were playing with the Philly Americans. It was either, it was probably 03 or 04 because we won, you know, we played two seasons when we started the NXL. And that was, I guess that was probably around my prime. I was pretty much, I was deadly. And I would just, wouldn't have a problem. Just anybody wanted to challenge me one-on-one, -on -one, they'd just lose the battle. So I, yeah. I found my gun skills and everything was on, was on point. So like, that's when the the crowd would was able to interact and scream and do everything else. So I think oh, yeah. it was uh, it was Gator and a couple other guys. They started doing Frank the Tank chant, and it just grew. Like, <laughs> yeah, I remember it well. Stuck. Yeah, yeah, it stuck. Dude, what was it? What was it like playing? Because you've played every iteration of paintball yes. at the highest yeah. level. Yes. I what have. are your thoughts on the evolution from you know out of the woods ten man onto the airball fields ten man, and then eventually this X ball format that we have? So you want you want the truth, right? You want honesty, right? You're I want the truth because I have my honest, opinion on it as well. People are going to like to hear it. You're not going to like to hear yes. it. No, we need to hear it. Paintball is supposed to be played in the woods in my eyes. It truly is. That's the pure form of playing paintball. Being able to be sneaky, being able to be aggressive, being able to hide, being able to do all different aspects of the game. Um. When they went to when they went to ten man air ball, that that brought out the gun skills and everything else. But when they went to X ball, I mean, to me, it ruined the sport. 
it was now it's everybody just runs their spots and shoots lanes and wait for people to run through them. Mm -hmm. So it's to me, it's not very exciting. I think if that's why I started going back to the 10 man to the mechanical, because that's where the true form of paintball to me should be played. And that's where the, that's where it's taught in my eyes. Like anybody can run to a bunker and just shoot a snake lane and go like this. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to shoot. He's going to run through sooner or later. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to shoot and shoot seven, eight pods. I mean, anybody can do that. Yeah. But do the people know how to literally walk up to somebody and be five feet away from them and they don't know where they're at because you're using trees to blind them out, stuff like that. It, you know, it's, so it's a whole different game. So in my eyes, I guess it had to happen because everybody's like, oh, we're going to be on TV. We're going to go to the, you know, to the Olympics, this, that, and everything else. But I don't ever foresee that happening. I mean, paintball is too hard of a sport to, you know, to video. So I don't, yeah, I don't see it being in the Olympics. I don't see it being on national TV, like NFL or, NA, or you know, NHL or any like that. I mean, the biggest thing that you got to understand with all those major sports, there's one focal point, right? Mm. Yeah, there's a basketball, there's a baseball, there's a football, you know, there's a soccer ball. There's, there's a focal point. Well, paintball, mm -hmm. there is no focal point. So it's kind of hard to film all that. So people yeah. that are watching it, they're like, all I just see is a bunch of things happening, running around, shooting people. Not, you know, nobody really understands it. So it's really hard to film. That's my opinion. I'm I think I think your opinion is right. I'm glad that you shared it. You you weren't, you know, like worried about offending anyone because I've had this opinion for a long time as well. I've seen several iterations of paintball. And, you know, I always think in context of let's make paintball grow. And if we want to make something grow, naturally, we need to have more eyes on that that activity, that sport. Right. And I think paintball at its core is a game. It's a game of capture the flag. And if we've right. tried to evolve it into this sport, which requires athleticism, and I think that's that's got positives to it as well. But the further we get away from the game that's accessible, the less likely the wider demographic is to actually adopt said game, right? Oh, I agree that 100%. Can, the younger generation needs to be involved if this sport's going to die. Yeah. yeah. And back in 10, man, you, you, could, you could look at a game of 10 men and see all different shapes and sizes competing at the highest level. And what that does is paintball at the highest level then becomes accessible to the viewer. I can do that. In fact, man, when, when I was in high school, I wrote a paper on why paintball is a great game uh, for, for people that want to be involved in sports without the pressure to take steroids because you don't need them because you could have certain attributes that uh, would compensate for lack of athleticism, like communication right. and, and aiming and stuff like that. So I both hate and love the fact that paintball went, went to X ball but I think, you know, the 10 man format is much more exciting as well, because Frank, do you remember when moves mattered? Like a run through absolutely mattered. And it was the difference between winning and losing, making there, the finals or not making the finals. There's about four or five people in my paintball career that had that capability, like myself, LaSoya, people like that, Oliver, that literally at a minute, you know, you're just looking, you're looking, you're probing, bam, you're gone, and you just get a four-pack going down the field, bang, 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 and no one even know what happened. And yeah. it was a huge difference maker in oh, the game. Oh, yeah, it was a game changer. Game changer. It broke games open. So doubt. you could do that in X-Ball, and then you could still be losing the match. Yep. It's less significant, and therefore less exciting to watch, in my opinion. I right? agree. No, I agree 100%. Yeah. So... You know, I, I think the sport does need to grow and, and I, you know, I see, I see everything as well that we develop X ball to be on TV and whatnot, but we have new waves, ways of, of getting video. If we had drones that were on a 10 man field in that format, I think we could get eyes on it. And I think it would be more interesting to the wider demographic of people that, that want to play something new. I totally agree. You know, someone made a comment to me. I can't remember who it was, but they said, Paintball has gone through evolutions like every 10, 15 years, there's a, a change, a shift. Well, we should be coming up upon a shift right now because X-Ball is about, what, 15, 18 years old right now, 20 years old. So it's time. Yeah, you know, 20 years old. Yeah. So it's time for hopefully someone's going to come up with something bigger, better, faster, whatever, 
more exciting. Who's going to do it? I have no <laughs> idea. I thought Oliver was coming up with something. How did that go? Did you hear anything about that? Uh, you know, he invited I'm me sure out he... to try out a new little, you know, a little game that he had going, but I couldn't make it out to Cali. So I don't know. Did you hear anything? I heard that he was going to eventually make a paintball compound. That was like a, a camp where you go and learn paintball. And it's like, no, there was a new format. That, it, like a draft a new system. format. I, it had something to do. Maybe it was an individual thing. I don't know. But he said it had it would incorporate everything, you know, your gun skills, your sneakiness. It would so I don't I don't know what happened. So I'll have to get well, it out. It, it, to be like to to still maintain the sneakiness and still maintain the gun skills, we I think we do have to get get away from the the format, the X ball format. But you know what I know? I'm just a paintball nerd, right? <laughs> you better and, and my enough. lens my lens is shaped through all the experiences i had i've had since playing since you know before x-ball existed so i can't right, you've been I around you, know, you went th- you went through the transition too it's just yeah. but i like the transition because we went from i went from pump guns to yeah. semi-auto to full auto 30 balls a second <laughs> you know, then it's like you crazy. gotta be kidding me how fast can your gun shoot down to now they're just dropping it down lower and lower. And then we said, okay, let's go mechanical. But now these mechanical yeah. guys are in a competition. Who can make a mechanical gun shoot faster? I'm like, no, now we're, we're in the rat race again, doing the same bullshit. Like, well, you know? you, I mean, I know that you can shoot a mechanical gun faster than 10 and a half balls a second. Exactly. Fact. Yeah, exactly. But you can't hold the lane as good than you can with a gun shooting NXL mode where you go like this. Yeah, it's just rampant. You know, that's all you're doing. Yeah, let me look around. Yeah, my guns, you know, a mechanical, you're 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 bouncing, you're you know, your triggers moving, you're trying to get it to go faster, you know, but like I go dink, 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 and shooting eleven balls a second, you're not even moving your hand, you know. You're not Dude, moving so the gun that, at all. That's another skill set that X ball kind of squashed was shooting fast. It's yeah, like, that's not a it used to be a skill set. Like certain people you'd be like, that guy can shoot fast. And we yeah. don't have that anymore. Yeah, I agree. Not these young we just kids, sound like no idea what it's like. Do we just sound like bitching old dinosaurs right now? I, I don't know. I don't know if people no, are, are feeling I'm this. Gonna, <laughs> I'm not going to say it's bitching. I'm just going to say these young kids today have no idea what we did for them in the sport to progress to what it is now. Because they have, we've been through so much for them. They got it. They got a cakewalk now. It's simple to play yeah. paintball now. It really it is. is. You know, it's it's like it used to be at the the core outsmarting your opponent. And now I feel like more, it's more like positioning and holding lanes. Yeah, that's exactly. Know? I'm, I'm doing yeah. some coaching this year. I'm coaching a WNXL team, the high rollers, and I'm coaching a yeah. couple other divisional teams and I'm helping out with a semi pro team. So, uh, uh, pretty much, you know, the girls I'm training them, I'm teaching them gun skills. I'm teaching them some other stuff, but the divisional kids and the semi pro guys, they already know how to play paintball. All I'm doing is helping them with the game plans, adjusting stuff like that, you know, I can't play the game for them. They got to play the game. I'm just putting them in the right position yeah. to win the game. So, well, coaching definitely matters. I mean, it's, oh, definitely, without a doubt. it's, it's a factor yeah. for sure. Yes. Well, Frank, tell us about a memory. Uh, it doesn't have to be on the field. In fact, I might even prefer off the field memories. Oh, I know boy. you got a lot of those too. <laughs> Share with us. Oh, boy. Is this like, are we going to keep this P, you know, rated PG <laughs> or what? Because there's a lot of them. Uh, yeah, uh, no, PG, no, no. I, no, I mean, okay. we're at least we're PG. We're going straight yeah. raunchy. No, I mean, I could tell, <laughs> I could tell you stories that are bad. No, let, let's pick. Give me, Don't give get me anyone an era, in trouble. Give me an era that you want me to talk about, and I'll talk about something in that era that perfect pe- people probably would love to hear some good stories about some crazy car events, some hotel events, some. Fight um I mean there's the just year, so much it's the year I mean, 2000 2000 and the uh the rival rivalry between aftershock all A's and Ironman are at its peak <sighs> is that is that Boston was that sure. Boston is that Boston when <laughs> when Bruno went out of bounds <laughs> All right, I'll tell you the story. So this is a good I think story. that was earlier than 2000. But. Was it? I think that was – no, it had to have been around 99, 2000, 2001. It had to have been because we switched over. But here, here's the story about this. And it's a lot of people don't know the full story. But uh, – <clears throat> so we go and we play Aftershock in the woods. Game starts. 
I, I'm running. I'm at, I'm at about the 30 yard line or so, maybe 35 yard line. About a minute into the game, all of a sudden, Billy comes up behind me and just checks me in the back, like just straight forearm checks me in the back. I go, "What the fuck?" And he goes, "They're behind us." I'm like, "What are you talking about? It's a minute in the game. They're behind us. What are you talking about?" And I hear chaos, like gun shoot in the back. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. How did they let him come down the wire? I'm expecting they let him come down the wire. He ran all the way down the wire. And Billy was already dead. So he's here talking to me while he's dead. So my first reaction is I'm not going back. I'm going forward. So I started running down the field, bunkering people, causing chaos, whatever. We end up losing the game. I'm like, what the fuck happened? You know, nobody knows. Well, we come to find out Bruno went out of bounds, came into the field, which is another field. He's like, oh, shit, wrong field. Came back out of that field, came into our field, and started shooting everybody. And Billy's the first one he sees because Billy's the slowest. He's in the back of the field. Billy gets shot in the back of the head. So I'm like, All right, whatever. <laughs> so we're mother effing each other, you know, cheaters, whatever. And, you know, these are – now you got to remember, this is when you have, like, Gary Noblet, six foot four. Brick shit house, you know, spud, you know, all these guys, these lumberjacks. And I'm like, I don't back down from anybody. I'm like, fuck you, ah, we're going at it. <laughs> so we go into, so we go into the semifinals. The semifinals at the location, there was a hyperball field and there was an airball field. And the airball field was like just in an open field. And then the hyperball is right next to it. Well, for some reason, they, it was the last game of the semifinals and they started the Ironman game ahead of ours and we were playing ground zero and Ironman was playing somebody. Well, Adam is like a mathematician. He like, he knows all the scores. He knows what's going on. So the game finishes and he's like, okay, Adam says, we need to win this game with a 98 and we send shock home. I said, all right. I said, everybody just stay alive and let me go to work. I just destroyed people. I was in their 30-yard line like two minutes in the game. I got two guys left, <laughs> one on each wire. I'm in the middle. I'm shooting. The sh They're like, it was like, what the – What? I don't know what took over. I was pissed. Yeah. So aftershocks on the back line, and this is when the field was um, – it was like the, the tubes connecting all the bunkers, the sub-air ball field. Yeah. And the flag was laying on the back tube. So I shoot the last guy. I think it was it was Timothy Doyle. He was the last – it was him and – I think spittle were on each corners and I shoot them shocks on the, on the back line. I look back. I know we only lost one guy, maybe zero guys. I grabbed the flag and go, you're going home. <laughs> Ran back on the flag. They were like, they like, we couldn't even, they didn't even want me to go back to our camp because aftershock was there ready to just pounce on me. Jeez. So I'm like, well, let's go if that's what we're going to do. So they, like they separated them. They made them leave, go to their, you know, go to their side. We went to our side and stuff. So that was, that was the aftershock Bruno incident. It was, it was pretty good, but we got that's the good one, in the end on that one. They got, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. they got. All you, all you hear about is the out of bounds move. You don't hear about the, the aftermath. Yeah. Yeah. So my buddy on the team, Chris Wright, he was on aftershock. Then went well. He was with me on Jacksonville. Then went to AfterShock. Then went to the All Americans, and uh, so he was friends with all those guys. And he was like, "Dude, they're gonna they're gonna kill you. They're just gonna straight yeah. kill you." I'm like, "Whatever, let's go." <laughs> but are they still a little happen. salty? Yeah. Now, honestly, we're friends. I'm friends with all of them now. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, but it, it's fun. It, it, we had some good times. So that that was the one incident with Bruno. What else you got? What else you want to Oh, know? man. I mean, you want to hear, I'll hear, you want I, hear a story? Here's a story. Here's a good one. This is right. uh, World Cup 97 or 98. That's when we all stayed at Old Town. We all stayed at those shitty-ass hotels right in front there at the Days Inn or whatever. Yep. So. Uh, Fun times. It was Billy Gardner, George Davison, and Daryl Trent. Okay, so anytime those three were around, it was chaos. So they would always try to one up each other. So Billy and Daryl get into a scuffle. 
Daryl takes his tooth, Billy's toothbrush, and sticks it up his ass. Oh, I heard about this. So gross. Okay, okay continue. All continue. Right. <laughs> Billy says, "All right, that's fine." Billy goes, "Oh man," and shits in Daryl's bed. <laughs> Billy starts. Billy starts puking because he shit in Daryl's bed. <laughs> They're throwing evil paintballs at each other, like, and that's when it was like the nasty yellow evil. Yep. Right. And I, I come around the corner and I'm like, Billy's puking the shit. Every, I'm like, what are you idiots doing? <laughs> and uh, they're like, Adam's coming. You gotta stop Adam because Adam, Adam's like. So I go downstairs and Adam's walking up. I'm like, Adam, I gotta talk to you about something. And like I'm trying to delay him, he goes, "What the fuck's going on?" And I just started laughing. <laughs> he went upstairs. It was just pure chaos. This, oh my god! <laughs> like we, they have Billy and Daryl have ruined so many rooms, rental cars. We were in um, Portugal one year. Billy, we get a rental car and we're driving. You know, it's it's a it's a manual. You know, it's a it's a clutch or whatever they're called and a manual manual. Yeah. And we're driving and we're going like 70, 80, 90 kilometers an hour. So like 50, 60, 70 miles an hour, whatever it is. I don't know. Also you European. Why are you using kilometers? Yeah. Well, that's what it is. Cause it was a kilometer, thing, right? <laughs> so whatever it was. And I said, and Billy goes, I wonder what would happen if I throw this in second gear. That's literally, I'm in the front seat. He's driving. He slams into second gear. And also, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> we we're like we're like literally on the side of the road in the middle of Portugal now with a broke down vehicle and Adam is in another vehicle ahead of us 15 miles well when we don't show up to the hotel an hour later cuz back then I don't even think we had cell phones back then you know right i'm like you <laughs> idiot he's like oh it was fun i mean we've had guys we've had guys leave we'd have guys pull up to an airport in a country leave the rental car right there Adam gets a bill for like thirty thousand yeah. dollars. Where's the rental car? I don't know. We left it, you know, literally right there in the parking spot. It's just crazy stuff. I don't know. I feel like stuff like that doesn't happen as much as it used to. Oh yeah, not like, anymore. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I think everyone's got gotten a little more responsible. Maybe responsible. Yeah, we were like, oh, we're gonna miss our flights. Let's just leave the rental car here. They'll find it. Yeah. yeah. Well, then it gets. But there's cold. a lot of stories like that. And there's, I mean, there's still story, like not anything recent, but Rocky used to fall asleep in bathtubs pretty frequently. Oh, yes. And flood things. <laughs> <laughs> I love Rocky. He's such a good guy. Right. Such a good Dude, guy. This is why paintball is so great. Like we have, um, we have amazing stories to tell, you know? And I think if more people were aware of that, we could also attract a wider demographic. I agree. I agree. But then again, you don't want what we did in the past to continue to the future. Like we were just stupid. True. We were just yeah. stupid. We need moderation. We need to, we need to have a healthy level of stupid, but not, 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 uh, you know, right. vandalism. you gotta like have, that. you gotta have fun. <laughs> can't, it can't be all go to the event, be professional. You know, you gotta let loose. I mean, you're, it's kind of like a mini vacation. You gotta have fun doing it, but yeah. And it is a game, time, right? It's time to compete. You gotta compete. All right. Absolutely. Yep. Well, Frank, man, you've you've played with the the best in the world. What, I mean, do you have a, a favorite teammate over the years? <sighs> On the field or off the field? What what do you what do you want me to give you? Give me both. <sighs> wow. I'll tell you one of the one of the someone that I really admired, looked up to, is a good friend. Loved being around uh, was Yo Shrau. Yeah, so he's just he's an amazing person. Yeah, just, uh, he was a great teammate. Um, he was like, I would come down to his house for the weekend. You know, I would be up in LA. I'd drive down to San Diego. I'd stay with him, and you know, in the house and everything. It's just it was. I don't know. He to me, he's like one of the best teammates ever. Just all around great guy, great heart. You know, give the give you know the shirt off his back for you. Never, you know, never a second thought. So that yeah. was probably one of the best people I've ever played with on a personal level. Um, someone that I really liked playing on the field with. Um, I mean, like right now, <clears throat> I love playing with Spesh Robinson. 
Like if I know yeah. I'm alive and Special's alive, we can pull out a game. Like we've done it numerous times. If he's alive, I'm alive, and I don't care if there's ten of them. I know that we can pull it out. So, Special's like, still balling too. Yeah, he's yeah he's a. I wish I wish I was in the physical condition that he was. In. <laughs> he's well, so, he works he's really so, hard, man. I, oh, yeah, I look at his post, and he's always at the gym, like putting in the work. Well, he know? owns like three gyms, so he's there working yeah. in, working out. Yeah, so. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. I sit there and eat donuts, and he sits there and does burpees. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how long have you played with Spech? Like at least two decades, right? Uh, well, there was yeah, we played together. He came on to the All Americans, maybe 2001, 2002. I'm guessing, maybe mm. 2002, 2000. I don't know, somewhere in that era. I the, all the years I'm, you know, yeah, and then we went 20 to, years ago, so it's hard. Yeah, exactly. And then we went to the Philly Americans, and then we won the first NXL championship. Then we went back to back NXL championships. So it was 03, 04, um, and then I stepped away from the all Americans, Philly American camp. And I think he only stayed another year and then he stepped away also. And then uh, when the resurgence of the 10 man came back, he's like, Hey, let's play. I'm like, let's do it. So, man, I love that. I love that. Well, I love that 10 man exists, but also love how many players it's brought back to the sport. Oh, without a doubt. You know? Cause I was gone too. And I came back for that. Yeah. It's it's great seeing guys that you haven't seen in the sport for 20 years all of a sudden they're back playing paintball. Yeah, it's like, like a reunion. Like, Holy. It is. It's a reunion. That's the way I looked at it when uh, when Tim. So we did the when Fight Club did their first mechanical 10 man event. They did it in Chicago, hmm. and we had a bunch of old guys and we had some new guys because we brought like Tim Montrester and some of the younger generation. And stuff like that. Um, and we just had a blast. Like it was, we had so much fun. It was crazy. And just seeing everybody. And then like Tim, Tim and I were rooming together that event. And he's like, man, we got, I got to do this. Yeah. He's like, what do you think it would work at, at the Pittsburgh field? I said, dude, if you don't do it at the Pittsburgh field, you're stupid. Like that between you and then just the old Pittsburgh fields, like the mounds and stuff. That's what, that's what paintball is all about. And yeah, we grew and it like, God rest his soul, but that those events like that first, you know, ICC was so much fun. Yeah, something yeah. special. Yeah, it was. Who's been uh who's been your favorite player to watch over the years? Like every time you watch them, you just know you're gonna see something good. I mean I I mean I played with them and I love playing with them. Um, but I mean I gotta say Ryan, Ryan Greenspan, yeah. like People have people have been asking me lately who's the best paintball player in the world, and I said you know you can you can name I can name a half a dozen people that I would put in that top you know five six of all time that have played all eras that you know competed at the top at all times and continue to compete at the top and Ryan's name is right up there at the top all at all times so yeah he's he's done it and keeps continuing to do it yeah so. I, I i believe that he is the greatest of all yeah. time nothing against oliver i mean i never played with nothing oliver because yeah. when oliver left to the ironman i came on to dynasty i was kind of like his replacement and uh so but i never got a chance to literally play side by side i mean we may have played an all-star game together with i don't even know i can't remember if we did or we didn't honestly um but uh, <clears throat> Oliver's a great paintball player too. But if I had to choose between Ryan and Oliver, I'd, I'd have to say Ryan. Yeah. I mean, Oliver is certainly special. And and uh, he, at one, at one era of paintball, he was certainly the greatest. But as far as like uh, longevity and career and amount of wins and the impact he makes on the field to this day, you have to choose Ryan. Right. You, you, you watch him. And you can see the years of experience and winning at the highest level in everything that he does. Exactly. You know? I agree. Yeah, he's, he's a man. Yep. Frank, do you have a do you have a paintball item that you that is most cherished to you? Um, 
I mean, I have I have jerseys from like so long. I got guns. I have markers. I mean, the thing that's really cool is the, like the Hormesis headband. That's really cool. I, you know, they gave me one with my signature on it, and they gave me and they did a. It kind of sucks because they did like they did a Frank the Tank, but there's only like seven or eight of them out there. You know what I'm saying? And you didn't get one. <laughs> it was, well, no, I have I have two. As a matter of fact, I ended up. I okay. Two. So they were both gifted to me, as a matter of fact, which was pretty cool. Um, but uh, it kind of like, but the guys now they get like a whole series. They get like you know, two hundred you know headbands, and I have I got yeah. like six. But it's but it's like it's like one of the first or second series. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, uh, this definitely. jersey right here, let me grab this. This one is probably my oldest jersey I have. It's uh, oh man. That's Team all is driven by Smart Parts, RP, PMI. Yep, dude, it's not even faded. No, uh, no, uh, uh-uh. it's 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 pretty much pristine. I try not, I don't wear it out or anything. It's you know, what was I, that hanging. I have the red, white, and blue version of this hanging right behind me in a uh, in a frame, so I can't really show that because I don't have to turn the camera and stuff. But um, the cotton pullovers reign supreme. Yes. Yeah, they do. I still think they look they look super badass com- like compared to a jersey. Yeah, but I've like I've had so much renegade clothing and stuff like that, the camos. I've given away you know, I look back and I'm like, "Oh my god, I've given away thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars." To me it was nothing, you know, it was a right. you know, a $20 hoodie. Now it's the thing's worth 500 bucks, you know. The old Sam Dan and out. all the other stuff. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, oh my goodness gracious, you know, it's crazy. But it, it's cool. You know, to me, it's cool that all the stuff that we played with back in the day is worth money now. So, because everybody trip, wants the OG stuff, the OG stuff. It, it just goes to show you, like, there's there's a lot of money in paintball. Because right. I remember, like, the first Sandana I ever bought, first one I ever bought, and it was like $30 or something like that. Someone bought it off off of me for one thousand dollars. Yep, and it's like I don't get it. Like they're like, oh, it's because the this is the tree bark and the it's it's the dye the is darker than what they make now. Diamond plate, this that whatever. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. And I'm like, that's amazing, but like a thousand dollars. Like you really you're really gonna give me a thousand dollars for this? So you know, yeah. just goes to show you like what's possible in paintball. It's it's a lucrative industry. I just think you have to find your your niche. No, it was funny. I, I got a story for you. Um, when the debacle happened with Smart Parts and they, they went through their, you know, bankruptcy, which really was kind of like a bullshit thing. Um, but they, Adam had, he told me the story, he had evolutions, like nice. just a stack of evolutions just sitting in the back warehouse. And he sold them for like 250 bucks each. Now they're worth 1500 <laughs> Yeah, yeah, now they're worth more than what they were worth back then. Yep, he's like, you got to be shitting me. I just like, I laughed. <laughs> That's why I don't, I don't sell anything anymore. I just yeah, exactly. Out. I just, my <laughs> like people ask me, oh, you got any jerseys? You got any stuff? I said, here's the deal. When I die, get in touch with my daughter. It's that simple. <laughs> she will have so much stuff that she'll be willing to get rid of and sell. But, yeah. Until then, I I don't sell anything. I really don't. Yeah, you have a nice inheritance for your daughter. Exactly. Yeah, she's got a lot <laughs> of stuff coming her way. So. so, Frank, what what advice would you give to a new newer player who wants to to make it in professional paintball? Don't forget the basics. You know, it's like I look at these kids nowadays that are running out. They got their gun up here, their tank here. They're shooting, like just the fundamentals of paintball, you know, I don't, I don't know who is teaching these kids nowadays. And I think a lot of them are just winging it and playing their own way of paintball. But <clears throat> when I would go and I would literally start teaching people how to play paintball and you could be a D three player, a D two player, whatever. I would literally, you know, I went and did a clinic with Yaya last year, the year before. And Yaya is like, he gets there and he's like, all right, let's do advanced drills. Let's do this. Let's do that. And I'm like, these kids don't even hold their fucking guns correctly. Yeah. You know, it's like, you got to teach them how to hold the gun, you know, put the gun in your shoulder blade, you know what I'm saying? Keep it tight. 
make less profile, you know, snap shoot, shift of the way, not not fling your gun out like this. You know, that's not snap shooting. This is snap shooting. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just the fundamentals. And a lot of people don't even know the fundamentals of paintball. So well, it's it's that's an interesting point because you know you can learn the fundamentals of paintball, and then you can witness an anomaly like Todd Adamson. Yeah, I I don't I don't understand Todd. I don't I don't understand <laughs> Todd. He's a hip shooter. I mean, he's amazing. I love playing with him. I just every time I see him, I'm like, oh my god. So here yeah. here's another one, Jason Edwards. <laughs> yeah. Jason Edwards, I his parents used to take him out of school in middle school to come train with me. So I taught Jason Edwards how to play paintball. He's a phenomenal paintball player now. Everything I see him do, he he got from me except one thing. And I even message him every time. I said, I hate, stop doing that. He's like, oh, I don't do it often. He'll do this. He'll so be shooting right. It'll do he this does. crossover and shoot like this. You know, I'm not, I'm a lefty righty shooter. I'm shooting right. I switch my gun. I'm shooting left. I'm shooting right. I'm shooting left. I can, my transition gun is really quick, but I hate that crossover and then come back and then crossover and come back. It's like, I don't know, but it's if a the different paintball era, breaks paintball. on the other guy. You know, that's all that matters. Yeah, it's just a different era of paintball. Now it's like, I guess back then you, you know, you don't, you, you just kind of shoot the lane now. And back then it's different, you know, if, yeah, I don't know. Well, like I said, poopy is an anomaly, right? That's not like that's not the standard trajectory uh, to learn gun skills. It's like he's he's developed his own way, right? He has, he has, and he I don't understand it, but he has, and he'll he'll head check somebody and they'll think it, and then all of a sudden, bam, a ball's right there because it's down here at his waist, and they don't yeah. see the gun, <laughs> they don't think he's shoot, they're shooting at him, so they're looking at him like, hey, Todd, whack, I'm like. What the hell? And when you play against him, you always think that you shot him because he like he's wiggling in his bunker a lot. Like you see oh, a lot yeah. of movement he's in so there. You're like, did I get him? That, he that, he that jumps like around a... like he has Tourette's. I swear. Yeah, so you. it looks he like you're playing. shooting him. He's like, yeah. Did he flinch? Did I get him? And then like paintball comes out of you know out from down here by his knees. <laughs> I love Todd. As a matter of fact, today's yeah, their too. anniversary, Todd and Tammy. So happy anniversary. It is you this happy anniversary, anniversary Adamson's. Yeah, I messaged them earlier. Wish them a happy anniversary. I think they're living the dream. Paintball they, they, family. They don't work yeah. anymore. They don't do nothing. They're out on the boat every day. They they got it made. They got living it made. Life. Yes. Yeah. He did. He did well. His family. They did well for themselves. You know. They so. Yeah. I guess now it's his time that he can relax. Yeah, now, but it's funny because uh, Tammy plays more paintball than Todd does. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just think it's cool that they play together, like their husband and wife team that plays together. That, that's you don't see that too often, right? You, know, you got Paxons and and who else? McCurleys, McCurleys, yep, Folks. Yeah, um, yeah, there's not many of them. There's not, yeah, there's not many of them out there. Yeah, awesome. Well, Frank, what would you say that you're most thankful for that paintball's given you? Um, the ability to travel the world. Amen. I have, I have won tournaments in 30 different countries. Probably I've been all over the world because of paintball. And I probably never would have had the opportunity if it wasn't for yeah. paintball. So to see the things that I saw because of paintball is, uh, is an amazing thing. My, uh, my dad, rest his soul. Uh, when I won my second world championship, I gave him the championship ring and he would wear it sometimes to show it off, to go up to the VFW and talk about, you know, with the old guys and everything. And he'd say, this little bastard used to come to me for $50 every two weeks to go play paintball back in the day. Cause it was expensive. You know, you get 50 bucks and yeah. you get like a hundred rounds, you yeah. know, back in the day. And he said, this, this guy has now traveled the world and made more money playing paintball than I could ever imagine. So it was pretty cool that he, you know, it was exciting that he was able to see some of that. That's yeah. It's super special. Yeah. What What's the, where's the best place you've been? Favorite place for paintball or for like, like, so you like, like wherever I tell, wherever guys, so I tell guys, I tell the guys and I tell all, all guys this. I said, if you ever get a chance to go anywhere and if you're single, go to Stockholm, Sweden, mm. they're all Why if you're single. 
they're all drop dead, gorgeous, blonde, blue eyed, beautiful women, and they love American men. They huh. love you. You could you could have four eyeballs, you know, one, two, <laughs> like it, like it was the easiest country in the world. Interesting. Yeah, like it was funny. We went there for a tournament, and I like I stayed in the hotel room like ninety eight percent of the time, except to go play paintball. And you know what I was doing in the hotel room? <laughs> <laughs> all because of paintball. Yeah, all because of paintball. Yeah, it was so easy. It was great. It was so much fun. So awesome. uh, Portugal was nice. Um, I mean, Germany. I like Germany. People in Germany. I mean, London. You know, England. That's I've been there thirty times. Whatever. Uh, France. Eh, it just sometimes <laughs> the people in France are kind of, kind of. I don't know. It, it wasn't. I never had the best experiences at, in France. I remember one year we went to France and the we played at i guess it was like a soccer soccer fields or whatever and you, if you had to go to the bathroom you had to go into this place and you literally had a shit in a hole on the ground i was like yeah mm-hmm. that's, you know that was you know that was in the late 90s or whatever different toilets there yeah yeah so i was like yeah i'm not too fond of this i wasn't really <laughs> big on like the food you know, yeah. in different countries, but you got to try different things. The only thing I've never been, I've never been to Asia. I, that's the one place that I really feel that I missed out and I was going to go and I didn't go. And, you know, and I, I always thought that the uh, World Cup Asia was going to keep on going, but then it stopped. So I never, I never went. So that was one thing that I wish I had the opportunity to do. I think it's going to happen again. Really? I think starting to, starting to happen again in malaysia yeah so, so hopefully i'll hop on with somebody uh, maybe they'll need an old man that you know can shoot a gun so, shoot a lot of people yeah yeah so we'll see we'll cool. see well frank man thank you for sharing thank you for your stories thank you for your time here oh, is no there problem. anything that uh anything you want to part with for the paintball community uh just everybody go out there have fun and, you know, if you're at the event, come say hi to me. I'm usually at the Dilly Dilly Donuts trailer. And I also got like the Frankie's Italian Ice trailer now. So a little bit of side money I'm doing. And, and it's pretty good. You got to come try the Italian Ice. It's really good. So if you're out the of donuts are Europe, delicious too. Yeah. Melting yeah. Every, your mouth. Everybody loves it. The donuts are a staple now. Everybody yeah. knows about the donuts. That's not even a question. That If you're coming for donuts, just be prepared. You're going to be waiting in line a little bit. because. Yeah. <laughs> But the Italian ice is really, really good. And people don't know what Italian ice is. People think it's just like shaved ice with some liquid. It's not. It's really good. It's like a sorbet. It's like a, you know, it's a really sweet, you know, it's good. It's really good. So are you going to be out to Florida? Or are you going to? Yeah, I'll be there. I'll, get, right, I'll pick come, one up. Come see me. I mean, my daughters will be running the booths since they're running the trailers because I'll be doing a lot of coaching, but I'll be back and forth. So, but definitely come cool. hit me up and anybody wants to come say hi, get an autograph or whatever. I, you know, I'll be around. Come say hi to me. Awesome. Thanks, Frank. No problem, man. It was great talking to you. Thanks for having me.